Tony, in the movie My Big Break, we see that you were roommates with four then undiscovered actors. This was back in the 90s, is that right? Yes, 97. Okay, how did you all come together? How did you meet? Um, we, uh, I met Greg on a movie and then Greg introduced, and I met Greg and Brad, and then uh, uh, through Greg we met Chad, and then we all moved in. Uh, Greg was there first. Uh, Chad was their second and then Brad and I moved at the same time and then later on Wes moved in. Okay, and at the time you didn't really realize that you were doing a documentary. You were sort of, was it toying yeah, with we the were idea just of different scripts? Yeah, we were just <laughs> roommates and we, um, we uh, you know, uh, I think we lived there for like a year and then that's when I realized that we would shoot occasionally, but not with the intention of like doing a documentary. Like everybody was trying to express themselves with cameras and acting, and um, and then a year later, I think that's when the whole concept developed, and it's like, okay, this is interesting. Then start filming. Hmm. Okay. And how did they feel about you filming them? Uh, were they excited about it at first? Oh yeah, in the beginning, very supportive because you know it was something to do. And it, the possibilities, I mean, we didn't know what could happen. Also, we didn't, nobody had agents and managers and people telling you what to do or what not to do. I mean, it was, it was almost like work that could bring in possibilities down the line. So everybody was like, oh, okay, this is great, let's try it, yeah. So then how far into your moving into Maslin um, did stuff start to take off for these other actors? The three in particular? Um, pretty quick. Pretty quick. Um, uh, I mean, uh, Chad was getting some parts, but very like small roles. And then Brad started to uh, get a lot of work, especially after he went to Sundance. And then uh, a year later, probably or two years, then Wes moved in and he's also started to work really fast. So, so it was kind of. Um, one guy would take off and another guy would move in and would make it and then a third. So it was just kind of, it was surprising. So what was the energy in the house like at that time? Because I'm sure, it, was it feast or famine? Was, was it everything sort of snowballed all at once or steadily, steadily it climbed up? And it, it was really more, um, it's always the unexpected. Like everybody was open for what could happen next. And so it, there was a period where when they started to work it was always every few days somebody would open the door and say I got another part so it was just like it, it almost kind of got old that everybody was working at one point you know I mean you look back at it now and you go wow but when it was happening it was like oh that's great you know and how many hours of footage did you capture probably over 200 200 yeah yeah yeah. And then, did you start making the documentary while you were still living at Maslin, or did you move and then make it in um, terms of like editing the movie together? No, I started editing when I was at Maslin, like about maybe five years later, five or four, and I started to assemble everything. But back then, um, editing systems were very expensive, so uh, there was a time when I rented the system, and then that became very costly. Then I found a studio where I could go edit there. And then, so I would edit and then I would stop and then I would film longer and I would just stay and wait and then I would find another solution or just get more money and I would edit again. So it was just, it was a on and off. And then at what point did you actually screen the movie? Where, when it was it, it was finished and then you finally had a screening and what happened? When it got accepted at Toronto. Okay. That was the first time, I, I, I didn't even show the guys what I did. Um, they did see, I think a couple of them saw uh, a cut of the film at William Morris in their theater downstairs and that was once the movie was accepted, that's when they were um, representing the film. And, um, and the other two I think saw it at the festival for the first time, they didn't really, no, nobody saw the whole movie completed until the festival was on. And you were still living in the house? With yeah. The, okay. Yeah, all we were all still there but at the time the movie was done when we went to Toronto, Brad was out, he was married, and um, and Chet had moved out. So it was just like Wes, myself, and Greg were still at the house. So tell us about September 10th, 2001. Uh, we screened the evening, uh, not knowing what would happen the next day on the 11th. 
we uh, we had a great great screening uh, I think it was like almost about a thousand people came to it was a big theater uh, you know we were flying high I mean like it was great like after all that work wow we have we could actually have a movie to show uh, you know we celebrated everything was great and then we um, William Morris at the time they were talking about like they're getting they were gonna make a deal with someone who should be the one to go with which company that should pick up the film there were all a lot of options so we figured you know what let's just do it the next day let's you know everybody chill out and just do their thing and enjoy the moment and uh, then we woke up in the morning and the attacks happened so once that happened the festival suspended the whole uh, programming they just closed and they decided they're just not going to continue the festival they did continue i think about four three days later they felt like well okay well everybody's stuck there might as well just continue showing the films which was a bad idea anyway it was over you know and uh but a lot of people nobody was really thinking about movies at that you know once that happened it was like uh, everybody was trying to figure out how we're going to get back you know so people stopped talking about movies or buying movies or showing movies even when they did everybody was very tense so um, we did have another screening but it was it was a big screening and I think people were looking for a way to escape and just kill time but it was very good but depressing I mean you know it was it just didn't have that same feeling as the first night and so was there talk that maybe some of the agents of these roommates were uncomfortable with showing no film. no not at, not at, not in Toronto I think it's when we screened here because the main agents at William Morris especially for West and stuff like that I think they were very tense uh, but they saw the movie here when we screened it here at one of the theaters in LA I think that's where that you know about you know looking back now I don't think because it was the movie I think also because I think because there was a you know West was going through a weird period um, the movie was kind of almost in their eyes validating his behavior in the sense they felt like if it came out well oh, do we really need this right now so I think that's where the tension was coming from mm. and then take us to some of the low points then because eventually you destroy the film and you leave Hollywood mm. what time span are we looking at from the screening to the point that you leave and, and where were you in your life? What were you going through? Well, I think it really happened because once we came back and I couldn't sell the film and people started disappearing. I mean, nobody disappeared as disappeared, but they wanted to take the movie for nothing. Like, first we were going to buy it, now we could take it off your hand because you had, um, uh, you know, uh, this horrible event happened and it like killed the heat on the film. So but we're willing to take off your hand. Even somebody actually asked if I would pay them to take the movie. Um, you know, where do you get that stuff from? I have no idea. I mean, somebody said Hollywood something, I don't want to mention names, that they actually would release your film if you would pay them for promoting it. Uh, so you need to go actually find money to release your own film. And so I was like, we went from, you're gonna sell the movie to like I'll take it off your hand to like actually we would charge you to release your movie so I'm like all right it's a very interesting town and I think that's when I hit bottom I just couldn't believe it I was just like are you joking I mean this is like absurd um, because this is a festival so it's like heat. it's not like the whole world knew that the movie was coming out and then something happened and they don't want to see it anymore um, but I guess that heat that they're talking about more about the buyers you know it's like they all want something it's when they all like fighting over something and when nobody's interested and then you have a problem so I just didn't accept that and I became very upset about that and um, so I decided you know write it and like see what happens I waited but then waiting you know in LA is very difficult and then it became very um, uh, frustrated you know and then at the time too my friends were like starting to also hit rock, bo rock bottom in a way of like they were you know there was like a lot of confusion there was a lot of depression you know the typical thing that you made it but then now you start to sabotage so it was just like the whole scene was messy you know it was very uh, everybody was down 